What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know how to live off the grid, which will open up pockets of your time that you could be using for useful stuff? Well, I got good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you how to do this. It's normally $45, but since you're a loyal listener of the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. You're listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you want to step into your greatness, you've come to the right place. Here is your host, the human strength expert, Kyle Newell. What's up, everybody? It's Kyle from Unlocking Your Inner Strength, unlockingyourinnerstrength.com. Once again, with show number 50 coming up on the one year anniversary. So I'll make sure I have something cool planned for that episode. The other night I was sitting in our recliner. It was about 10.30. I was waiting to take the first shift with Colt. It was a Friday night. And out of the corner of my eye, the side of my eye, which I'll explain in a second, I saw a truck pull down the driveway next door to us. The house that is next door to us is currently abandoned. It's foreclosed. And I think some people know this. As a matter of fact, just last week, I found a heroin needle out in front of the house, which I I suspect is from the high school kids that party across the street. However, I'm not positive of that. So I went downstairs, decided, should I wake Devin up? She's trying to get a break. But I woke her up. I said, hey, should I call the cops or should I go over there to investigate? Because somebody was in the driveway, the car lights were on, and now it appeared that the house lights were on. So somebody was in the house. I don't know whatever came about. I know the cops made whoever was there leave, but they did not arrest anybody. But Devin was excited. I was excited because there was an element of danger and novelty in the air. So we're outside watching, trying to see what's going on. It's hard to see because we have all these bamboo trees that separate us and them. And that's what I want to talk about today are, are some cool little things about the brain that have just kind of popped in my head and I'll do my best to tie them all together. This is kind of a throwback to the mind map episode. Just making a note because another idea popped in my head. And I think the more that you know about your brain and and the human brain, how the human brain works, the more uh, you're going to do well in life because you're going to be able to communicate better. You're going to have more self-awareness and you're going to be able to create strategy and look for patterns. And that's what life is about. The brain is a pattern recognition machine, prediction and response. So why was it so exciting the other night while the police officers were here? Well, we live out now in, in a quiet part of town. It's very dark. There's no street lights. Uh, not that many houses out this way. So there's not a lot of uh, hustle and bustle excitement. So our brain latched on to the novelty of having p- the police officers come out to visit and see what was going on. That's the first thing, right? Novelty is the greatest aphrodisiac for your brain. As a matter of fact, that's why people cheat in relationships. Now, it could be emotional cheating, could be physical cheating, but it's novelty. It's something new, and the brain craves something new. At least the human part of your brain does. The human part is uh, the superego, right? Now, the animal parts of your brain, the reptile and the mammal, they don't like change. They don't like something new because it represents threat. When something new arises and comes up, there's no prediction and response, which means there's no pattern. We go into reaction mode. Now, the human part of our brain loves the novelty because it's a stimulus, Gets the adrenaline going, gets the cortisol, all these stress hormones, kicks them all up, fires the brain up, and it's like a shot, like a cocktail, and uh, it can thrive on it. So if you look at relationships, a lot of this, guys, as I'm talking, is just connecting in my head with new ideas literally as I'm speaking, so I'll throw these out here. When people are in crazy relationships where there's a lot of arguing and fighting, that's novelty, that's new. Now, yes, it's it's a comfort thing. And uh, those animal parts of your brain, if you're in a relationship like that, don't want you to get out because at least you know it. It might suck, but at least you know it. And that's that old saying, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. So a novelty, how can we use that in our life? You can look for new ways to spice up a relationship in your life, new ways to make work fun for you. Now, you might work a nine to five, but what are the qualities that aren't there that are making it feel like it's a drudge? Like you're walking through quicksand. So you got to add some new elements to it. Add some new elements to your daily routine. Is there a new nutritional program, a new training program? I switch my training up. Once I hit my goals and or I get bored, I switch it up. So boredom and burnout will keep you from achieving your goal. Remember, I talked about that in a recent episode. 
but novelty, the greatest aphrodisiac. Keep that in mind. I said out of the side of my eye, I saw the truck come down the driveway. Now, if we look from a survival point of view, we are more likely to get ambushed from the side or the rear, coming from the rear to the side to the front by a predator or a, a threat. So we have many, many, many more um, cones and rods in our eye in the peripheral. 95% of them are located in the peripheral part of the eye. Then I may have that exactly wrong. I don't have my notes in front of me, but 95% of one of the others located in the periphery of the eye. And that is uh, to detect threat coming at you. So threat uh, is uh, uh, very, well, I shouldn't say threat, but things like judgment, okay, are very threatening to the brain. If I move you to the outside of the tribe or the pack, that's where the predators roam. Threat level is going to go up because chance of survival goes down. So everything's about survival, even this peripheral vision that we have that's there to uh, to really lock into anything coming into your periphery that you might have to turn and either fight, freeze, which would mean fainting, or run away from, if that's a possibility. The other day, we were walking uh, down a local road, a quiet road, into a small sh town of Neshanik Station. It was me, Devin, the boys... Dax and Matina and our niece, Kelly. And I wanted to show Devin this property that's uh, situated, you know, back off the road. Beautiful property. The couple did a great job with this. So we walked by and uh, I said, oh, look, they got a uh, guard dog sign. Now, we didn't see any dogs. So we walked all the way down about another half a mile to the stop sign and turned around. Now, at this point, Braxton was in his diaper. He no longer wanted to be in his shorts, so he was shirtless in his diaper. He didn't want to be in his stroller, so I'm carrying him. I'm pushing the stroller. Kaylee has Dax, and Devin has Matina and Colt strapped. So she has Matina, and Colt was strapped to her chest. Walking back by this house, all of a sudden, out of my periphery, these two huge Dobermans come sprinting at us full speed. Luckily, it takes a lot for me to, to lose my senses, I saw that they were wearing collars, so they had an electric fence. Now, Kaylee went into freeze mode. These dogs were big and nasty. She went into freeze mode, literally dropped Dax's leash. I had Braxton. I'm yelling, Kaylee, take Braxton, take Braxton, take Braxton so I can go save Dax. And she was just blocked out. I don't want to say in a state of shock, but, you know, mildly, right? So she went into freeze mode. I went into fight mode. Because I'm going over there to get Dax. Now, amazingly, the, the dogs just sniffed each other. And these were highly trained dogs. You could tell by the property these people have. I mean, they're, they're very well to do. And somehow we got Dax back without any altercation. Now, the owner came by. She happened to be driving into the driveway right about then. She said, are you guys okay? Uh, you know, how was he with the male Doberman? And I said, you know, he was fine. Uh, she goes, oh, he, the male Doberman's really nasty with other males. Now... That was a, a peripheral vision thing. That was a, a fight. Uh, you know, that was freeze. All these things. So that's what I'm telling you. All these things that I'm explaining to you, you're going to see over and over in your life. So we escaped a close call there. What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know how to live off the grid, which will open up pockets of your time that you could be using for useful stuff? Well, I got good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you how to do this. It's normally $45, but since you're a loyal listener of the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. Another thing I've been noticing when it has to do with the brain is your sleep. Now, we know how important sleep is for the brain, and how important sleep is for controlling hormones. Sleep is the best diet in the world. If you're not sleeping uh, enough or you're getting broken up sleep, your appetite's going to be through the roof. Mine is through the roof right now because with our circumstances with Colt, he's not sleeping all the way through the night, nor should he be. He's only five and a half weeks old, but it throws you off. Now, where I've been struggling is, to be honest, some mornings I'm so tired from the, the broken up sleep and I'm still trying to do everything else. And I say, okay, I'm going to lay down for 10 more minutes on the couch. Big mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. That goes against the rule of never hitting the snooze button. And it's funny how you tie things together because I ran out of one of my supplements. So usually I wake up, boom, I pop a couple of caffeine pills and I'm going, you know, brush my teeth. I have my little routine, as you know. And now it's been thrown off, obviously, because of cold, which I'll get back to. And that goes down to planning for chaos. 
Don't fight it. Don't fight chaos. Plan for it. You know it's going to show up in your life. If the brain doesn't account, like if you look at these really type A people, doesn't account for chaos, you're going to go into reaction mode. Stress is going to rise and you're going to keep sinking further and further back. So just kind of go with the flow. For the brain, as far as hunger levels and focus, do not hit the snooze button. If you're up, if you happen to get up within 20 minutes of when your alarm is going to go off, stay up. Don't go back to sleep. Worst thing you can do. The best thing you can do for a consistent, uh, or for, for quality sleep is a consistent wake up time. Very important. And I've talked about it in another episode, but don't buy into the BS that sleep is for the weak. You'll sleep when you're dead. You got to grind. You got to hustle. All these stupid things. You need your brain to do anything effective and efficient and creative in this life. Again, I'll tell you from my personal example, the way my sleep's been as of late, it's very hard to get my brain going. It's like it's uh, spider webs and cobwebs up there. So keep that in mind. Now, Dr. Dave, one of my good friends, he's in my mastermind group. We will be doing some upcoming episodes together. We're working on a project, which we're kind of keeping closed door right now. But he's one of the top hormone and anti-aging doctors in the world. And last time I was with him down in Florida, we were talking about testosterone. Something I've always told guys is that, look, when you start going on testosterone, you're going to feel better. Yes, physically, your body's going to change a little bit. And it's not as drastic as people think. You don't take testosterone or anabolic steroids and just become this monster. But I always say you're going to feel better. I said, what do you mean? I said, it's not a stimulant, but you're going to see what I'm talking about. It's just your brain. You feel like there's more life, more focus. Well, it appears from speaking with Dr. Dave that we have a ton of testosterone receptors on the brain. So that's one of those growth hormones or growth factors, right? Or, or anabolic or, you know, anabolic means growth. It makes you feel good. So remember how I'm always talking about exercise affecting the brain more than the body? That's that's just kind of a mild example. But when, it, when you hit those testosterone receptors on the brain, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel better. And yes, I highly recommend testosterone for any guy that's over the age of 25, as long as their blood work shows it. And their blood work, to me, will show it if your testosterone level is even below uh, 700 units. Uh, I think they do it units per deciliter. But that would be my recommendation. And the more I'm, I'm researching and looking, testosterone, even for older females, meaning let's say you're done having children, testosterone is very uh, effective for females. Now, it would be at a lower dose, but as far as changing body composition, as far as sex drive, that's something we're going to really start examining, and I hope to really pick Dr. Dave's brain about, but that's something cool, testosterone in the brain. It's uh, another study just showing you how the brain focuses. Now, this is something I would use in marketing, right? or in communication. As you know, I'm a big storyteller. And there has to be a, some kind of element in storytelling that keeps people kind of waiting. What happened? What happened? So in this study, I believe it was a Harvard study, they took a picture of a Ferrari, hooked people up to these electrodes and looking at their brain scans. And there was a response. Uh, it was a brand new Ferrari, a good looking couple driving it. And there was definitely some response, some waves going on in the brain. Then they put up a picture of a plate, like a plate that you would eat off of. Boom. Almost like it flatlined the brain. No emotion, no feeling towards it one way or another. Then they put up a picture of a dead cat. Now, when the picture of the dead cat was up there, the brain went nuts. Much more brain activity. Fireworks going off in the brain. Now, why would that be? Well, that would be because the brain focuses way more on problems than solutions. So if you're trying to get somebody's attention, remember uh, my friend Anthony had a question, how do you communicate effectively? Well, first of all, you have to have the attention of the other person. So I could say, hey, John, do you struggle with uh, your appetite around 11 o'clock every day? And do you feel like you're going to get nauseous at that time? Something along those lines. Now, if that was specific, like if somebody said that to me, I might say, yeah, I do. I do feel like that sometimes. What does it mean? Well, I've, I've come up with the problem that you're facing. Now, sometimes people don't even know what the problem is. Sometimes the brain doesn't. The brain's always scanning, right? You have the amygdala, which is deeper in your brain, part of the reptile brain in your limbic system. Now, that part of your brain will also get activated when you're watching violent TV or violent uh, playing violent video games. And that part of your brain doesn't know if that stuff is real or not. So just be careful with overdoing it with that stuff. Going back to what I was saying, the brain went nuts when it saw the photographs of the dead cat. So the brain is highly receptive to problems. Now, the brain will also come up with any answers to any question that you ask it. So I'll leave you with this for today. Ask yourself, what's great about this problem? Whatever the problem currently is in your life, what's great about this problem? The brain will come up with some answers. And that's always been my key. One of my keys to success is 
always looking at the silver lining, being overly optimistic. And yes, you have to train the brain to be like that. But I was having a conversation with some friends the other day, you know, and they're, they're scared of some changes that are coming. They're scared of what's the next step. I said, well, I don't know what the next step is always. Obviously, nobody does. But you know what Trump's at? Confidence. I don't know how it's going to succeed, but I know it will succeed. All these projects I'm working on, I don't know how it's going to succeed. I know if I follow my process, it will succeed. And that's just a way of thinking, a way of life. Now, that's all I have for you for episode 50. I'll be back next week with episode number 51. In the meantime, if there's any hormone questions you'd like me to ask Dr. Dave or to hear us speak about kind of rapping back and forth, let me know ahead of time. And uh, if you'd like a free copy of the $47 per month Unlocking Your Inner Strength newsletter, just go to unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash N as in no, L as in love, NL. And you can download your 16-page free copy there and let me know what you think. If you haven't already done so as well, please leave a review on iTunes. That definitely helps me and share this podcast with anybody that you feel could benefit from these messages that I'm putting out there. Peace. You've been listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you enjoyed the show, remember to subscribe, rate, and review us in iTunes.